We'll be going over IRS Notice CP13. Uh, this is a notice that you might receive from the Internal Revenue Service if there were miscalculations on your tax return that resulted in neither additional tax owed or a tax refund. In other words, your adjustments as made by the IRS uh, resulted in zero net tax or refund. So we'll go through this. This is a redacted version from the IRS website. We'll kind of walk through uh, some of the places, some of the points that are redacted, and we'll kind of uh, talk about things that you can do or perhaps what you uh, may consider doing when you uh, receive this notice. So uh, as usual, we'll start with the upper right-hand corner. You'll see the CP13 notice. Again, that, that, is, uh, that means that the IRS has made some changes to your tax return, uh, which resulted in uh, a net zero tax liability for the, for the tax period. So in this case, the tax year is redacted for some reason. Uh, there is a notice date. I do encourage everyone to pay particular attention to the notice date because if there are any action items or any if there's anything that you would like to do with the IRS, uh, you usually have uh, a, a certain period of time and it will either be pointed out in the notice or in the related IRS uh, web page. So if you disagree with this assessment, you have a limited period of time and that clock starts running as of the notice date. Uh, below that, you'll have your social security number, a contact phone number for the IRS, and if applicable, a call center number. Over here to your left, uh, you'll see that this is usually reserved for taxpayer name and information or uh, address information. So I always make a pitch that you should keep your address up to date in your IRS record. Uh, so you can do that by filing your regular tax return or uh, if it's between tax you know, filing seasons and you won't be updating your tax record for quite some time, you can call the IRS and validate your information and then change your address over the phone. Or you can file the official change of address notice uh, for individuals. And uh, uh, that is IRS Form 8822 for uh, business owners, that would be IRS Form 8822-B. And we'll put links in the show notes to uh, resources we've created in the way of articles and videos uh, about any of the forms that we mentioned here today. So let's take a look at as much of this uh, notice as we can. So changes to your, uh, it doesn't matter what tax year it is, but let's just say it's you know your Form 1040. The amount due here probably will be zero. Uh, so uh, the IRS mentions that there are miscalculations on your tax return, which could have impact your tax credits. And uh, so the bottom line is that the IRS made changes to correct those errors. And as a result, uh, there is a zero net balance, meaning if you pulled up your IRS transcript, it would show uh, zero. Uh, no refund issued. There is no tax liability. Uh, so, uh, and ironically, here is the 2008. Uh, so this presumably would probably be for the 2007 tax year. So uh, applied to the 2008 estimated tax. So in this case, that would be zero. So if you agree with the changes that the IRS made to your tax return, you don't need to do anything. Uh, they reduced your account account balance to zero. Generally, they do that if the amount that you owe is a dollar or less. So they'll just round that down to zero. So you don't need to send any payment to the IRS. However, there is a contact information form. If you uh, want to send the IRS written correspondence, you can do so. Uh, you write your social security number the tax year and the form number on your correspondence so that the IRS knows what this is referencing. You would cut out this and include that within your uh, within your envelope. And then you mail it to this address. Oops. You mail it to this address right here, uh, not the one up here. They may be identical addresses, but 
Uh, many times this is a completely different address and even a different IRS location than the one in the main letterhead. So always use this when you're uh, sending payment or sending any written correspondence to the IRS. So on page two, there's a continuation. So if you don't agree with the changes, you can call the IRS at the number given. Uh, you can go over your account. It may be a good idea to have your tax transcript pulled up. So we'll put a link in the show notes to resources we created on IRS form 4506-T. You can also uh, just pull it up online if you have established an IRS account online. Uh, so you can do that as well. So here are more specifics about the tax changes in this, uh, in this particular tax return. So it looks like the IRS changed the amount that was claimed as an adoption credit on line 54 of your Form 1040 uh, because there's an error on IRS Form 8800. So we'll put a link in the show notes to those uh, resources about the adoption credit in IRS Form 8800. Uh, although that's usually the tax form that uh, allows you to split disbursements. So um, I'll take a closer look into that. Uh, there is a different form that you would normally use to uh, claim the adoption tax credit, but we'll put the relevant links in the show notes. So this is a breakdown, uh, a redacted one of your tax calculations. Normally this would be your calculations. The, then there would be a different set of calculations based on the IRS correct, corrected version. Then it would also uh, trickle down into the tax withheld, estimated tax payments, total credits and payments. In this case, we already know that that results in zero. Uh, so we'll circle back uh, to this in just a second. I want to take a look to see if there's anything else here. I don't see anything other than just kind of general information about e-filing your tax return. So let's take a look at this, which is a page that the IRS has about a C, about CP13 notices. Again, your account balance is zero. You can review it. There are some frequently asked questions, and then there's uh, links to helpful information about your uh, tax withholding. So uh, you can file a 1040X, which is the admitted tax return, if you need to make another correction to your tax return. Uh, if you disagree, there's kind of a breakdown of what you need to do. And again, uh, back to the uh, 60 days, you know, from your notice date. So uh, in, in this case, that notice date happened to be February 9th, 2011. So in that case, you would mark 60 days from that point that's how long you have to contact the IRS if you have any disagreements. And then how can you find out what caused the changes? Well, in this particular situation, we did walk through it. Uh, the, the notice did clearly explain that. So uh, that's all we have for this IRS notice. Again, we'll put links in the show notes to the resources uh, created about some of these other forms mentioned in this video. So if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, or if there's another topic that you'd like to see covered in an upcoming video, please hit me up in the comment section. Thank you very much and have a great day.